Welcome back to this VXLAN management demonstration with IMC. This is the second part focusing on layer 3 configuration, testing, monitoring and troubleshooting. In the previous video we finished the VXLAN configuration for layer 2 and we verify that the virtual machines can communicate to each other. Let's see now how to configure default gateway for these VMs and see how IMC will be able to help us in configuring the layer 3 VSI interface to reach the default gateway of the subnet of those VMs. So let's get back to IMC to see how we can do that. So uh, in IMC, here's the list of the v previously created VXLANs. I have to configure the VRF first in order to, uh, to map the VRF to the tenant of my VM. So let's click on the first leaf and I'm going to select VPN tab I'm going to add VRF tenant 3 as a name I don't have to fill all those information that can be used later on for eVPN. Let's just click Add. Let's do it now for the second switch. This is leaf 2. Okay, and now I'm going to create the VSI interfaces that are used to configure the default gateway for my subnet. So I'm click on VSI interface, I click on add. There is uh, two ways of configuring that, a centralized way where the default gateway is located on a unique platform that is centralized or a distributed way where each VTAP terminating that given VRF has actually uh, the, the, the owning of the MAC address for the default gateway. So let's configure this second one. So both architectures are feasible and have some advantage and some drawback. For instance, one advantage for the distributed one is that virtual machine between subnets can have traffic directly without crossing VXLAN to a centralized uh, platform uh, when you use distributed way. Uh, obviously, if you want to have firewalling, that would be more complex uh, to manage if this is distributed and you may prefer centralized. So let's select distributed at this stage. So the, the interface type is a gateway uh, visa interface. The interface ID is, in my case, for instance, the uh, ID I select for the VLAN. I want to have local proxy capability for ARP. The VPN instance is the one that I configured. As this is a distributed gateway, we have to configure the local MAC address of that distributed gateway the same way manually on each VTAP. So here, let me put that MAC, then the IP, subnet mask, and select add. So that this is done on actually leaf 2 here. Um, I need to do that on leaf 1 as well. So let's wait for that configuration to be completed.
Meanwhile, we can go to leaf 2. We have VSI interface 930 that is already set with binding to the VRF and distributed gateway local. Few parameters still missing. Here we go. So let's get back and check if anything changed. Yes, now you have the local MAC address that has been set, the local proxy art that is enabled as well. So let's do that on leaf 1. So I need to set. So VPN I was set already. And now I need to go to my VSI interface. and repeat the same. Having the same MAC address on each VTEP will allow virtual machines to move seamlessly between ES6 hosts that are attached to different VTEP so that the, the MAC address that is pointing to the default gateway for that virtual machine will not change. So let's go to leaf 1. PSI interface already created. And now this is uh, bounded to VR3, okay, with the local MAC address. Let's have a look now on the virtual machines, what happen, and see if the virtual machine can ping the default gateway. Here we go. Let's say the, the ARP entry on the virtual machines for the dot one. Now we've got a MAC address. If I do ping 10.9.30.1. And that would be local only. So now if I go to the second virtual machine, gateway can be reached as well. As we finished layer 3 configuration with IMC and testing, let's see what extra steps we can do with IMC in terms of monitoring. So uh, first of all, let's uh, get to the topology view. So here we've got the topology, physical topology that is uh, reported by IMC. 
if I click on the on the equipment, I will get some information about um, the runtime, the IP address, and so on. And if I click on the link, I will uh, obviously have uh, information about the physical interface connecting uh, those devices. That's the physical view. Let's see the other topology, that is the business topology reflecting the VXLAN tunnels. So the spine still on the top, leaf 1 and leaf 2, and you'll see there is two arrows, one from the left to the right, that is tunnel 12 configured on leaf 1, and one being from the right to the left, that is tunnel 21 configured on leaf 2. So this is actually reflecting what will happen when a packet wants to reach the remote VM. The packet from the left will enter the tunnel on uh, that is 12, reaching the VTEP on the right and terminating to the VM on the right. And for the packet return, it will take tunnel 21. So we can have a look on um, on the spine, what happened in terms of traffic and, uh, and actually UDP port being seen for uh, echo reply and echo request uh, between those two virtual machines. So let's have a look at this. In order to analyze VXLAN packet traffic, we add a Wireshark system connected on spine 1 to mirror traffic and capture traffic crossing the spine. So what we do here is from VM on the left, bottom left, we'll do a ping uh, with uh, DSCP being set and packet size being set appropriately to uh, get up to the maximum of the jumbo frames supported on the switch uh, to ping the other VM on the right side. So let's get to uh, the, uh, the system and uh, go with the ping. So Please make sure that you've got MTU um, set to 9000 bytes on the virtual machines, Linux system. Please make sure that this is set as well on the virtual switch on the ESX system. And uh, we should be ready to go. So let's uh, go with the ping and let's start my Wireshark capture. Here we go. So let's stop the Wireshark at that time. Let's take a look now on the uh, IP header information of the first packet, the, uh, the ping uh, echo request, and uh, see what happened on the outer header, the inner header, and the VXLAN header as well. So as you can see here, the source IP is the VTEP on the left, um, which is the loopback. The destination IP is the loopback of the VTEP on the right side. Let's have a look at the inner IP header. So you may see that this is the source is the uh, the VM on the left dot 10 pinging the VM on the right side dot 11. Um, the DSCP value that has been set in my test was a shot forwarding 21. Let's have a look at the outer header you see that it's preserved, which is as expected. The packet size, so uh, my parameters of the ping uh, was in order to have a maximum packet size of 9000 for the IP packet, which is the inner uh, header here, and you see that the outer uh, IP packet has a, a 50 more bytes in terms of packet length that is uh, due to the VXLAN encapsulation size. Now we can have a, a look as well as the fragmentation. So the fragmentation has been set in my initial ping. Don't fragment bit is set. Whereas on the outer, this is not preserved because this is processed by the VTEP. Uh, uh, also, let's have a look at the UDP port. You see that the source port, so UDP destination port is obviously the standard uh, 4789. The UDP source port is dynamic and being set with that value, 58151, and the return packet is using another source port. Okay. Now let's have a look at the uh, VNI information. So if I click on that, I get my VNI, which is uh, the one that I configured on my switch. Um, 
this is about it in terms of information that you can uh, analyze for troubleshooting. This is pretty much detailed and uh, provide you a good understanding of what happened in terms of VXLAN encapsulation. Another information that might be useful to take from IMC is the traffic that is crossing the VXLAN tunnel. So for that, you have a, an easy way to, to get this information. You go to the VXLAN management, VXLAN, and you select your VXLAN on which you want to gather the traffic volume. For that, you uh, select one of that VXLAN and you activate monitor. Yes. As soon as you activate that, in operation, you'll get the capability to have traffic information. I just did that on, the, on that particular VXLAN, so I'm going to, to use the other one where I previously configured. If I click on traffic information, there is a new window, and if I take, for instance, last month, I query that. Last week would be easier to see. You'll see the uh, the packet per second that is um, incoming and outgoing inside the VXLAN tunnel. So very useful information to troubleshoot and see what really is the, the traffic volume. To conclude that video, something that is not related to IMC but might be useful to know is some troubleshooting command that we have on the on the switch. So first we can do a display um, L2VPN MAC address, so that will show the uh, remote MAC address being learned and the local MAC address to that tenant. Then we can do a display ARP for the layer 3 um, verbose, for the layer 3 information that we get uh, out of the, the tunnel and related to the VRF. So for instance, that uh, that uh, remote MAC address here, uh, that remote IP of the VM and um, link to the interface that is the VXLAN tunnel. Then you can grab some information about the um, L2VPN VSI verbose. You will find the statistic that we enable in terms of uh, packet in, packet out. You will have the information about the, uh, the, the physical interfaces that is bounded to the uh, to, to that uh, VSI. You have the, uh, the the rate limiting that is assigned on the bumps traffic, broadcast, uh, non unicast, multicast traffic that you can configure. Uh, you have information as well on the VXLAN tunnel, so display interface tunnel. You'll see the number of packets per second. Uh, you'll see the destination and source port. Um, and that's about it in terms of information. Last one that can be useful is the ARP caching information that we configured in, in IMC. So for that, you do a display ARP separation. VSI. And you get the 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 app that are cached on the system. Many other information you can uh, have access by yourself on the CLI to troubleshoot uh, troubleshoot Bixland, but more or less here is the main information you, you would need. Thanks for your attention and um, talk to you later with uh, another demonstration on Bixland with EVPF.